So I think we're kind of running out of time, but I'm just gonna um, show you what I was planning to teach you is about structs. And I believe we are able to give you this information like if you wanna look over the um, uh, presentation or do the last project here. But just in two words, structs would be the next step. So we learn different data types. We learn the basic, the int, the char, the bool, right? Then we learn that we can do pointers. So what is struct? If you run into a situation, or and we are going to get there, obviously, uh, in big program, that you have to manage a lot of data, it doesn't make sense just to use the basic stuff we know. So I'll give you an example. Let's say we have a class of students, and I want to handle all their birthdays. So each student is going to have a birthday that's going to consist of a month, a day, and a year. How are we going to hold all of this data? So let's say I have 20 students. Should I have one array for all the days, one array for all the months, and one array for all the years? That could be a solution. But then how do I correlate between those? How do I know to say for Mark what would be his uh, exact the, uh, birthday. How should I know which one to grab from each one of the array? It's possible, but this is just a simple example for something that could be more complicated. So what structs give us is a way to define our own data type. And what I'm going to do there, I'm going to say, I'm going to make a struct. And I'm going to say it's going to hold a birthday. So whenever I define a variable from this date type, it's going to have three elements inside, three members. We're going to have a month, a day, and a year. So in that way, I can combine different basic data types to be together a data type that I decide what it's going to be. So in this example, it's going to be a date. And I have more explanation about it and the project too. Uh, I believe we can provide it to you. But basically, this is where would be the next step in this class that we're doing here, just that we're kind of running out of time. Um, and there is an example. So I'm not going to go into that. Uh, we're going to provide that to you. Um, and that's it. I do want to point out a very, very useful link above. It's the Embarcadero tutorial, and I saw some of you already used it. Um, it's really, they have everything there. So anything you're not sure of regarding to your uh, work with the builder, that's a good tutorial. And this is another C++ online tutorial that's very helpful with all the information. You want to copy that. I mean, I believe we can also provide that. Yes. Any, any specific questions before yes. we wrap it up? Yes, and this is my email if you want to ask anything or connect via LinkedIn or anything. And the follow-up email you get from Embarcadero, you'll have my contact information. So any, any questions that come up, you know, feel, feel free to let me know. You know C++ Builder Starter Editions you have, they are, uh, they're perpetual licenses, so they, they will last forever. You don't need any additional serial number to keep them going. So once you register them, you, you have it for life. It was talked about you're going to get a 60-day license key, but you don't need it because it, it's, it's perpetual. It'll just last forever. So use that same serial number you got in the email after you download it. If you registered with that, then it just lasts forever. So, so today we just showed you uh, console applications, but that starter edition uh, also has... Uh, so you saw another node there for a uh, multi-device. Device application, so you can create some multi-device applications also, which is called our FireMonkey or FMX framework too.